Sometime in the sixth grade, I found an accordion in the attic. A pump organ and a beginner's accordion book. I taught myself to play music using that book and these instruments. Starting in the sixth grade, working on my own. By seventh grade, I could play most things out of the St. Cecilia hymnal and almost all of Mr. Shale's Songs of Zion, volumes one and two. Sister Louis Maria invited Paul Motts and me to play pump organ and violin duets in the eighth grade for our students. I thought he sounded terrible. By that time, I had started lessons with Ad Lovejoy, later organist for the Cincinnati Reds. Ad had published some music, too, and even some arrangements for spinet organ, my instrument at the time. These were arrangements of fairly hard piano pieces. I played it all, especially I liked Duran's Valse. In the ninth grade, I met Gordon Franklin, and after a few lessons, said that I wanted to learn classical music, you know, really learn to play. Christmas Eve of 1959 was my first classical lesson on the McManus tracker organ at St. John's Unitarian Church. Sometime in the spring of 11th grade, I began piano lessons with the redoubtable Ilona Vorm at the Cincinnati Conservatory. Her name, originally spelled W-O-R-M, was changed to V-O-O-R-M, Vorm, for the obvious reasons. Ms. Vorm spoke English with a thick Viennese accent. The other students at the conservatory said that she had been Bella Bartok's last mistress. I had no idea what they were talking about. There is a climate, and Rochester seemed to have a cool early September each year. My first weekend, I went to Third Presbyterian Church, where the bald and powerful Theodore Ted Hollenbach held forth. The organ sounded thick and dirty on the first hymn. Lyon. I never seemed to get louder, only thicker and blacker the louder it got. Our Eastman organ teachers were Norman Peterson, freshman year only, David Craighead, of course, Robert Naren, and David Lynch filling in during Mr. Craighead's leave, and later Russell Saunders. Saunders and Naren were more coaches. They complimented David Craighead, the consummate teacher. The Eastman aesthetic climate was modern and traditional. Trying for a straightforward and unmannered style, we mostly achieved the opposite. I took my artistry for granted and secretly worried about technique. I don't know about the others, but as I saw it, the talent of my comrades was considerable. The organ music at Cincinnati's old Odeon Auditorium was the site of organ recitals during my high school years. When I wasn't at Eastman, I would go there. And... Uh, even after high school. Somewhere in Cincinnati's western downtown, I don't, I don't remember exactly where, I went on Saturday afternoons to hear Wayne Fisher's students bravely play at the old Odeon 
as a critic once said. I heard John Weisrock play Bach's Fifth Trio Sonata and Rager's B.A.C.H., I think. He says to this day that it was in 1960 because he had the program, and I believe him. I know I heard him play Franck's Piazza Week, too, maybe on another program. Ritter Werner played there, I believe, and Bill Catherwood, too. They were all hero figures to me because they were what I wanted to be, an organist in a college degree program at an excellent place. The organ at the Odeon sat firmly buried behind facade pipes. I think it was a hill green lane. The sound was right in your face in a thick curtained dead theater. It was the first time I recall hearing any real reed tone and the students all played from memory. There were no parventitis pupils, as he called them, played at the Odeon during my years there. They played at the auditorium at the Shilato Mansion at Highland and Oak Streets. There was a divide between the studios, I could suppose, the divide of students in any context. The Fisher students always seemed tightly wound, like Wayne, and the Titus students seemed a bit aloof. Wayne's students were unapologetically virtuosos. Both teachers had excellent players. I loved the programs in this secular setting. I went alone, sat alone, knew no one, and always left immediately after the concert's end. It was wonderful. I had emerged never disappointed, having heard some great organ playing with some Sunday afternoon left. And I can still hear those tightly tuned reeds in an unforgiving space. Whatever happened to that young man? To that organ and to those halcyon, carefree days. Every once in a while, one gets to meet a great visionary, uh, and that is the, the case in, uh, in the person that commissioned me to write this, this composition, Circles Above. Uh, it was written for the Democratic Convention in Denver, and this is going back to 2004, and uh, the, uh, the great installation artist, Anne Hamilton, commissioned me to write this composition for her, to accompany her, her installation at that uh, convention. And she's a, a remarkable genius. And uh, this is dedicated to her. And I'd like to thank Taylor Marvin for his excellent audio work today. And, uh, and Anne Hamilton for commissioning this, this piece, Circles of O. This is John Kuzma reminding us that music for a while shall all our cares beguile.